Last week, I got the opportunity to check out World of Concrete 2023 in Las Vegas. Again, last year was my first time visiting, and this year even more 3D printed construction companies were featured. I did interviews with a ton of them that we're going to see here today. There were enormous companies that have been in the concrete industry for decades, along with startups and companies you guys are all familiar with, not to mention a few new names that maybe you haven't heard of yet. The material solutions included some geopolymers, some AC509 certified materials, and a few prints throughout the day. Let's start with Sika. I'm here with Lindsay from uh, Sika, and you guys printed this this morning? Yep. At 10 a.m. we printed it live. Um, as you can see here, the piece, we did some demos on it to show that you can get rid of the lines with the scraper tool. Um, also to see the layer lines that you have here. But yep, we printed it live. We also, around here, you can see we to, if you're printing a house with electrical boxes, you have this option as well, cut it right in. So it was printed about an hour ago and you can see it's standing pretty sturdy, 30 minute open time. Wow, so you cut this while it was still wet? Correct. You can do it um, with houses, windows, doors, electrical boxes, anything of that sort. It can just stand on its own. And this is your proprietary Sika material? Yep. All Sika. We're the material suppliers for 3D concrete printing. I was at the headquarters of the Scara 3D Potter Company with their CEO. They have a really cool product and they make it all in-house. You can check out that tour in another YouTube video. But thank you so much for explaining your print here today. And maybe I can check out the print you're doing at 2 o'clock and see you later. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lindsay. It's great to meet you. I'm here with Anyu Wang from RIC. And we're standing in front of your enormous new printer. Yes. This is a different or the same as the one I saw last time in California? It's a little bit different. This is our actually our newest model. And this one it has no restriction on how big you can print. It's just like the sky is the limit. So... Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And are you printing today? Yes, we're printing at 4 p.m. So yeah, definitely check us out and then we're going to do something really cool. So awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you. I'm here with Zoe and Saker Zing from RIC. And what are you dressed up for today? You look like you got a serious job to do. Yes, actually, I have to make sure all the systems are running perfectly. We actually did the pre maintenance for all systems. Just make sure we can run it well after yeah, 4 p.m. Awesome. And Zoe, how are you doing today? Good, good. Excited. What's on the agenda? Well, do the live print and uh, to present this new bad boy. Well, it's great. You guys have a big audience here. Z, CEO of RIC. It's good to see you here in Vegas, man. Yeah, finally here. Finally. You guys have two printers behind me. You said one of them you sold already? Yes. So the Rick one, we already sold to our client in Africa, doing great sales down there. And then right now, we just brought our brand new Rick Mobile. And this is a system that will take out most of your moving costs. Zero setup cost. It drives all of that back. And you're going to be printing here later today, hopefully, which is a pretty challenging feat. All the people around, you got, I know you need a lot of power, you need a lot of water, a lot of materials. What are some of the challenges in getting this print today? Well, it's not a challenge, it's about spending money, right? But for the benefit of the audience, let's show the people how easy it is, how chill it is to print with our machines. All right, bold statement. I'm looking forward to seeing the print at four o'clock. Yeah, yeah, because we're using a quick cream material. They're very good product, and it's very easy to print with. So yeah, it should be good. Excellent, thank you. William Hawk, well, CEO of Geopolymer International. How you doing, William? I'm doing, doing great, Jared. How you been? Well, I'm great. It's good to see this year you brought your mix of pump system, and you got a lot of other geopolymer stuff. Can you explain what some of this is? Sure. Um, just to explain about geopolymer, this is a ceramic-based concrete, not a Portland-based. There's no Portland in here. We don't use water to make it, so it has a lot of characteristics that we don't have in, in regular Portland cement. So this is waterproof, fireproof, acid resistant, and it lasts for 10,000 years. And if you don't like what you're printing, you can crush it and use it again, which makes it recyclable, which makes it very green. It's 92% more sustainable than regular concrete. So we've not only made a superior 3D printing material, but we also use it in making other products like um, countertops, or we do recycling for insulation. So we're branching out from just 3D printing, which we are a superior 3D printing material, than we are just um, doing 
printing and casting at the same time. That's incredible. And do you have any big prints coming up soon you can talk about? Yeah, actually we have a house that we're going to be printing in here in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, we have our printer that's uh, set up in North Las Vegas that we're setting up to, to start timing our materials in our, our printing. Uh, so that's going to be coming up real quick. And so you'll go through that R&D process, that's a little bit of foggy, yeah. but do you have any estimate of when you'll start the house? Uh, we're hoping that within uh, four to six weeks. Wow. We're, we're already breaking ground to get the compaction done and the testing and the permitting. So we have the land, we have the printer, we have the material set aside. We're jamming on it as soon as possible. That's phenomenal. Well, I can't wait to see how it goes. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jared. Good seeing you again. Marina Dukanov, co-founder of Renka. How are you, Marina? Uh, fine, excellent. Yeah. So you brought your geopolymer technology to the states, exactly. and what are you looking forward to doing with it? Uh, exactly. We're looking forward to print our uh, 3D printed house, made completely out of geopolymer, and then we're setting manufacturing here locally in the U.S. So if you want a product, product local based in the U.S., uh, we can get it. And what is sourcing this material like? Uh, what's that process? Is it different from concrete? Uh, yes, so we have different materials. We can use waste products, we can use byproducts of our industries, uh, and we don't need to go sign them. That's why it makes it low CO2, and we can use as many local ingredients as possible. And anywhere on this planet you can find local ingredients. That's what makes Geopolymer really local and sustainable. I'm here with Mikey Butler, the CEO of Space Green. Right. And you guys have a mix. You're going to do some hands on demonstration here. All right. This is pulled by filament and uh, watch that concrete. Absolutely. They call this concrete sand. And I'm giving it just ordinary tap water from Las Vegas and some ordinary Portland cement. So there's nothing special about this. This could be the same as concrete or mortar. You can make it home. I made it a little bit wet, so I'm going to add some more sand to it. You would not want to make a mix this wet. If I, as the engineer, I wouldn't accept this as a mix. But it doesn't matter because with this 3D add mix, which is a shrinkage reducing agent liquid with various solids suspended in it, we can take and add that to this mix. We can turn it into something that you can 3D print or you can slip more rapidly. So that was a super, super wet mix. Now, it sticks. So you can build this stuff vertically. As soon as it comes out of the pump, if you want. So I can right away build a little wall. I don't have to build any forms, and I don't have to shoot chakra. And that process doesn't happen right away. It starts right away, but it gradually increases as the water replaces the solids that are in this 3D atmosphere. We sent it out to labs for testing, and we found that the shrinkage was drastically reduced too, which is just a side effect. Um, the purpose of this is just to eliminate forming. Uh, I've been working on this for 10 years, and at this point, at the Rule of Concrete, looking for a partner that wants to manufacture and market this stuff. It's very sensitive to high sphere. We can turn this back into a very liquid concrete. And what's this up here? Oh, this is an inline mixer. This is the one specifically for 3D printing. So the admix goes inside this injection port, these two injection ports, and the mortar is pumped through here. And I don't know if you can see down that thing, there are some inline mixers so that in your pump line, you can uh, mix as you pump the mortar. This is the one we've been using with concrete. And we've done two test buildings, three test buildings, and a test retaining wall 90 feet long with this this inline mixer. So this is ordinary delivered concrete going in this end and then space creep coming out this end. The admix is injected in here at a rate that's controlled to be proportional to the rate of solid concrete. It's completely eliminated in some cases, in, in any case potentially, plastic shrinkage is gone. And also because the fibers can develop their strength before you shrink, the, the ultimate strength and ultimate cracking appears to be minimally minimal or if not reduced entirely from a visual point of view. The strength of a test cylinder could be a little bit weaker, like in the range of 10% less, but in the, in the field the strength has been, been stronger and I think that's because of the internal carrying provided by these solids in this mix. When they, they absorb the water out of the, the mix that you thicken, as the Portland cement gets really thirsty as it's hydrating, it 
reabsorbs the solids back into it. So the solids release the, the moisture back into the Portland cement and cure it from the inside. And that appears to be the reason why we get better strength in the field. I'm here with James Charlie, CEO of Art Ventures. Nice yep. to meet you. Nice to meet you. So here you have a demonstration of what a build site might look like. Yes, that's right. So uh, we we are, are a startup. We've been doing it for two and a half years. We don't have enough to uh, rent the big space outside and print for real. Maybe next year. But what this shows is it's a 20 to 1 scale model of our two models. So what's different are most people in 3D printing do a gantry system or a, a movable gantry, and that's great for some applications. But our goal is different, and that is to be able to handle remote areas or where you want to pull up and just do one house. So all of ours is a system on a trailer. So it's got everything from the water, the mix, the mixer, the pump, and the arm. Built several things in our shop. We're gonna do one outside in Tennessee in about two months, uh, working with a contractor there. And we're starting to take orders and are pretty excited about the space. That's awesome, man. And for material, are you developing your own mix? Uh, so we're, unlike some folks, we don't wanna go the proprietary mix part. Um, I, I understand why people do that, but I think for 3D printing to be successful in any industry, it's gotta be a non-proprietary mix. So we've got some suggestions of what to do. And we also, there are several companies that have a 3D printed mix and those are, we've used at least one of those and that's fine. Um, our goal, we're working with a university professor right now to come up with recommendations on a non-proprietary mix that should be successful. Hopefully we can catch him again in Tennessee once we start winning. That prints. sounds great. Awesome, Good. man. Thank you so much. Here's a little rebar tying robot that can automate the tie process. It's an interesting trick. We're joined by Matthew, Carly, Sophia, and Philip from Cobot. How you guys doing? Doing well. Doing well. Good morning. Hi. Doing great. So you guys have all kinds of activities here at World of Concrete. No printer this year, but I'm sure there's a lot of new stuff you guys are looking forward to. Uh, is there like a couple of new things for Cobot? Well, we have a lot of things going on. Do you want to touch up on that? Yeah, we have a lot going on. What we're doing here at Wall of Concrete, uh, being back this year, not printing, but we're doing two educational events. That's great. Um, one of the most popular off of Concrete this year. So it's a lot of fun and a lot of great people to talk to. Awesome, man. Thank you. And Matthew, what exhibits have you seen that kind of caught your attention here? Just looking at automation technologies. Uh, there was one yesterday with automated demolition technology that uh, caught my eye. Um, so yeah, looking to see where software and hardware is coming together and it, it, that section is definitely growing. Well, we just crossed paths in a very busy world of concrete. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to do 30 seconds with me and I look forward to seeing you guys catching up later on. Good to see you, John. Right. Now we get to the first print of the day, which is at the Sika booth. They're printing on the 3D Potter and you can see here their first layer is really tight to the print bed. Here they've reset the print and they're able to do this just by pulling the material out from the print bed and dumping it right back in the top with their proprietary Sika mortar. This is a nice trick, especially if you want to redo. This happens a lot and it can be the source of waste in printed concrete. Being able to reuse it reduces the amount of waste that you end up with on the job site. Noah, you're getting the print started again. Feel free to ignore me if you're busy, but what's going on? Oh, we, no, we're just doing it again. I wanted to show that we could use the same material over again after Amazing. we did a print. And this one looks like an even better quality the first few That's layers. That's correct. That's the idea behind it is to try and, if you can't get it right the first time, so let people know that, hey, look, you're free to do it again. Drop it back in the hopper and go back to work. And that's the Sika material you use. That is the Sika material. Yes, it is. It's the 752. Cool, man. Well, good luck with the rest of the print. Thank, Thank you. you. Now for the main event because it's the biggest print outside with the biggest printer with the RIC team joined by some familiar faces from Alquist. Here they're doing the backfill of the printer, applying a little pressure to the extruder head to make sure that the hopper fills up, and also testing the buildability of the mix, making sure that the water ratio and such is correct. Here you can see Eamon going back and forth on this piece of lumber in order to ensure that the material is able to sustain the weight of the next layers on top of it. You can see he's doing his best to get a nice even layer. There's a pretty big crowd here. My favorite part about the construction industry is how decentralized it is. I tried to emulate this nature in my operations by having the Automation Nation. It's my personal website and membership 
where the members have access to virtual tours of 3D printed buildings, a list of 101 printer manufacturers, and also a list of printed homes, a forum, ultimately we'll do some live Q&As as well. I'm hoping to really build this out so that I'm not dependent on any big media platforms and I have my own platform with my own domain name in a decentralized fashion. Now let's get back to the print. They touch down on the print bed and begin extruding. Their printer is a KUKA robotic arm attached to a lift system so that it can reach substantial heights. And here it's just printing from the floor. Today they're going to go a couple feet. It's a nice print with the quick creep material who we'll do an interview with later. I'm here with Bing Tian, the champion of 3D printed concrete at Quickcrete. How are you today? I'm doing great. How about you? It's great to see you since we saw we met last in Houston. Yeah. Uh, you guys have a print behind me. Is yeah. this the same material you're using for the Houston print? Uh, this is actually the early version. You know what we use in Houston is even better than this. Oh wow. Yeah. This is what we did you know about you know a year ago. We did the testing and we put this you know uh, you know backyard you know outside. Went through the winter. You see you know. Just, uh, there's no cracks, you know, after three saw it. It's very durable. You mentioned it's not a mortar anymore. You're using a new concrete mix. Yeah, so this one is still a mortar. You uh -huh. know, the one we are just going to introduce to the market is the real 3D printing concrete, which means, you know, it has, you know, more than just the sand. That's two millimeter. We also have three eighths inch, you know, peak gravel. That's the so-called, you know, concrete, you know, should be. Yeah. Well, I know you have a lunch meeting right after this, but I really appreciate you taking the time yeah. to talk to me. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. it's great to see you. Um, okay. I'll see you again in Houston, maybe. Yes, okay. All right. Yeah, thanks for coming. Bye. Good afternoon. Kevin Smith with Mapei Corporation here at the World of Concrete in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're promoting and kind of giving some presentations on our Planet Top 3D, which is uh, our 3D printing mortar, mortar specifically for 3D printing, past AC509. As you can see here, it's the evaluation. Uh, service that's kind of covered that to kind of quantify the results on this and we're working in conjunction with Black Buffalo 3D. However, the same material can be used with just about any printer and we'd love to see you stop by and uh, you know if you have questions or concerns, stop on in. We'd love to see you. What did it take to get the AC509 certification? Lots of testing, uh, lots of lots of lots of testing, quite a few dollars quite candidly. Uh, so they printed out they had to have certification on the machine, the equipment. They had to have certification on the material. The whole process had to be refined and kind of presented as a package. So we went through a, a pretty extensive testing period of time, and uh, we're excited that we're the first in the market that has it. So come on by Planet Top 3D. We'd love to see you. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. I'm Tyler with Ventures Equipment. This is our 3-8 special pump, electric power. This is a 20-horse, 220-volt, three-phase motor back here. We have our 2L8 rotor stator on the end. This one is rated for 3 8 aggregate, eight cubic foot hopper. This unit here will do about 10 to 12 yards an hour. We have our new batch mixing system tailored towards your site mix systems. On the top we have a charge bin that's got weight scales built in. That discharges into the mixer. It's got a digital water system on it. So the operator over here can set how much material they want, how much, their water percentage, and your mix time, and all set here. After the mix time's reached, it's discharged out of the bottom of the mixer straight into the pump hopper. So if I understand right, weighing that with a scale allows you to have precise measurements of your ingredients that are recorded somewhere? Correct, yeah, we keep a record of the batches, so we measure the weight of each batch, the water percentage of each batch, and the mix time. 